Okay, hello everybody. Uh, today I thought I'd show you how to play Shadow Era. So this is going to go over the rules and how to get started with your account. So the first thing you want to do is create an account. Um, I'm just going to go with a guest account uh, just to show you how to do it. Make a password, uh, whatever that is, and just click, click uh, play. So you're going to get a choice of hero. Um, and I would probably recommend starting out with um, probably either Gwen or Boris, um, just because uh, those will give you a lot of hunter cards and warrior cards. Boris is already pretty strong out of the gate, and so is Gwen. And um, that way you can buy another hunter uh, hero and then just use that hunter hero. So. Um, if you buy something like one of the rogue cards, uh, or one of the rogue heroes, um, or the priest heroes, then you'll have less, um, it will be less easy for you to start building your collection, in my opinion. But uh, you can choose whichever one you want. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go with uh, Gwen. So let's choose a name. Um, um, I'm just gonna go with Gale Demon Dream. Sure, why not? Okay, um, perfect. So when you log in, apparently uh, you get a free deck. Sweet, that's really nice. Um, so yeah, uh, you also get free booster packs, and all of those are gonna go into your um, your merchant screen. So you're gonna click merchant and you're going to go to the booster pack place and you're going to click on that booster pack. Uh, this times three means you have three booster packs and you just click open and then you're going to get those cards. So we just got 15 cards um, right there. And you do that three times and you're going to get a lot of cards. So this is like really nice. It means that you're going to be able to start building your collection uh, really early on. Um, you also want to go to the pre-constructed decks, and I believe, um, yeah, right here you can open this deck, uh, which is perfect. So now we can play a Moonstalker too. Um, so the next thing you want to do right after you create an account, um, yeah, the next thing you want to do is go to the deck screen and look through your deck. So uh, as Gwen, we got this starter deck. Um, which is not terrible, um, to be honest, for a starter deck. But it's also not the strongest. Um, some of these cards really suck, and you'll want to eventually start taking them out. Uh, actually, uh, this card is banned, so we can't even use it uh, if we want to play ranked. Um, so yeah, let's take out those cards. Um, and we can also play Moonstalker. So yes, if you click this load button here, you can actually see the different decks that you have available. So right now we only have unlocked Gwen and Moonstalker. So those are the only two decks we can use. Um, and so I'm going to go back to the Gwen. Uh, you can press this arrow here to look through your deck. And there's an arrow here. And you just drag cards. So I'm clicking on this card and dragging it out. That's how I removed it. And then I can click on a different card and put it in. Uh, you need 40 cards in order to play a game in Ranked. And you just click the Save button and then click on the Profile. And then it will uh, save the deck. Now you could pay some Shadow Crystals. So that's this premium currency um, right here. And that way you can get another slave slot. The other thing you can do is name your deck. So let's just uh, name it Beginner. Um, I think I spelled beginner wrong. Uh, let's just name it begin. And then you can go ahead and go and um, we're now ready to play ranked. So uh, yeah, um, but first I'm going to just show you how to play real quick. So uh, the tutorial does a good job of teaching some of the basic rules, but um, I'll just also provide some commentary. Uh, there's some uh, flavor text here. So the idea is, um, on the, uh, in the beginning of the game, you're dealt six cards, and uh, the turn 
sorry, uh, the turn is split up into two phases. The first phase is called the sacrifice phase. So in the sacrifice phase, what you do is you take one of the cards from your hand and you drag it onto your resource pile. You don't have to do that, but I definitely recommend doing that. Then you've got the action phase. And in the action phase, you take these resources and you spend them temporarily, like you would spend uh, lands in Magic the Gathering or another card game, to play a card. So um, each card has a number in the top left corner, and that's its casting cost. And as long as you have that many resources, you can play that card. So I can play this card, Puin Bloodhelm, when I have two resources. Now, each resource can only be used once per turn. So uh, I could play Puin, uh, but not Battle Plans uh, at the same time. So um, I have to choose which one I want to play. Uh, so here I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice another card. And you can see it's outlined in green now. So that means I can just drag it out and play it. So like I said before, I could also play Battle Plans, but once I play Puin, now my two resources have been uh, spent, and now I cannot uh, summon any other cards. So I just summoned an ally. Allies are one of the main cards in the game, and they just go in this section right here. Um, and the thing about allies is they have an attack and a health value. The attack value is how much damage they deal when they attack, and the health value is how much health they have. Um, damage stays in this game, so if you get damaged, um, uh, like if Corrupted Angel took a damage, then it would have uh, three attack and five health. And that would be a permanent damage that would just have, um, unlike in some other games. But uh, you can also heal and stuff. So, um, But yeah, uh, that's besides the point. Basically, they just have an attack value and a health value, and once per turn, you can attack with an ally. Now, what attacking with an ally is, is it means clicking on the card and dragging it, and you drag it to one of your opponent's allies or their hero. Um, but there's no hero in this tutorial. Uh, you drag it to one of their allies, and then it goes into combat. And in a combat, uh, the person who initiated the attack attacks first. Uh, you deal that m number of damage, and then the ally there, if it's still alive, gets to counterattack. So in this case, um, the ally wasn't able to counterattack because I killed outright, but if it had, say, 4 health, if Treetop Spider had 4 health, uh, then it would have dealt 3 damage, and it would have gone to 1 health and be able to hit back for 1 damage. So um, each ally can attack once per turn, and once it attacks, it's exhausted. So exhausted means it just can't do anything. Um, allies are also exhausted when you play them for the first time, so that's why I can't attack with Puin. Uh, the other thing to know is that at the end of your turn, so I'm going to end my turn right now because I can't do anything. At the end of my turn, all of my allies become readied, and what that means is they're no longer exhausted, and they can now attack again. So my opponent plays an ally. Um, and now I'm going to show you the other type of main card, so, or some of the other types of main cards. So that's uh, Old Iron Dagger is a weapon card, uh, and weapons are a type of item, so that's the next kind of uh, thing or card type you want to know about. Um, you can summon it just like an ally, uh, but it goes into the bottom section here, the support uh, section. It has a cost just like allies, and it also has an attack value and a durability. Uh, so most items will have durability. Some items don't have durability. Uh, durability just means that it will be destroyed when the durability goes to zero. Uh, for weapons, um, the durability goes down by one every time it's used in combat. And weapons also have an attack value. Um, but some items like artifacts don't have any attack value, just uh, durability. And some don't have durability at all, so they're just like permanent uh, things that you can have. Uh, for weapons, you can use your hero to attack. So this is your hero card. Um, it just goes in this hero section right here. And this weapon is kind of like as if your hero was holding this weapon. So Gwen is like holding this dagger right now. And she can actually now attack. And it's just like if I was attacking with an ally, um, as if Gwen had one attack and 28 health. Uh, so you lose the game when the health reaches zero. Um, but yeah, I can attack uh, with Gwen right now. 
Um, and I just took a counter attack damage. And that's because I wasn't able to kill it um, on the first time I attacked. Now I'm going to attack with Puin and uh, kill the treetop spider. And then um, normally since this uh, Corrupted Angel is not exhausted, I would be able to do something with it too. But my opponent doesn't have anything out right now and they don't have a hero because uh, this is the tutorial. So I guess I'll just end my turn. Um, so yeah, the tutorial is kind of nice because it limits what you can do. Normally, I would be gaining Shadow Energy, but Corrupted Angel is actually making it so I can't generate uh, any Shadow Energy. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't get to show you that. But, um, yeah, so now I just have four cards in my hand, and uh, one of the things I can do is I can just choose not to sacrifice a card for my resource phase, so I'm just going to do that and press Skip here. Uh, now, there is one more card type that you probably should know, and that's Abilities. Abilities can be attachments or one-time use things. Uh, this one's a one-time use ability. So I drag it and target the treetop um, snake, and a forest serpent, and then it uh, takes two fire damage and is set ablaze. So um, abilities have a cost and they do something. Um, and sometimes you can target your own ally uh, if it's an attachment or something, and it can be like a good thing. Uh, so that's all abilities are. Uh, and now I can attack again with all of my allies. Um, so yeah, I think for this tutorial, we just have to play out six turns, and then we'll be done. So um, this is not a very difficult tutorial, uh, because I think um, our opponent has a very weak deck. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill these treetop spiders. And now I can summon an ally. So um, yeah, I mean, now I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I like about Shadow Era. Um, some of the nice things are the fact that there's no, like, uh, battle phase or, you know, restrictive turns in Shadow Era. So that means, like, uh, I can summon allies and then attack and then summon more allies. I really love this sacrificing feature. So uh, the fact that I can drag things and sacrifice cards makes it so much more interesting than having lands, in my opinion, like if you want to do a comparison to Magic the Gathering. And that's because in Magic, uh, like, you have a specific land card, and those land cards never change. Whereas in Shadow Era, any card can be a resource, and this creates a lot of strategic tension because you kind of have to decide, oh, do I need this card? Um, no, I don't need this card, so I'll sacrifice it. Uh, but then maybe you need it in the future, so you want to hold on to it. And so if you have a really good deck, oftentimes you just don't know what to sacrifice because you need everything, and that's really, really um, a great choice to make. Uh, and so that's kind of my favorite part about Shadow Era. But also the flexible turns are also very nice. So like the fact that I can sacrifice a card and then attack with an ally. And then I figure out, well, maybe I want to do something else. So now I can summon another ally and then attack again. And then maybe I feel like summoning an item so I can summon an item. So like the flexibility there makes it so that a lot of different um, combinations are possible. So it's very easy to misplay your turns, but it's also very possible to have a, like a very clever order of how you play out your turn. Uh, so Shadow Era is kind of nice in that way uh, as well. So it's a very nice game, um, and it's very free to play. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that in just a bit. But basically, uh, I've never spent any money on Shadow Era, um, and I probably won't ever um, need to because uh, the creators keep it very easy to just create a full collection uh, out of scratch. You just need to spend a little bit of time playing and kind of know where to go to make uh, money and uh, shadow uh, crystals. So we just won, and that's going to give us 50 gold and some experience points. And both of these are very important, because every time you level up, so if we get 50 more experience points, we're going to level up with Gwen, we're going to get shadow crystals which can be spent to buy uh, packs. And every time we win, we also get gold, which can be spent to buy cards. And then 
uh, both of those just let you add more cards to your collection. So one of the nice things about Shadow Era is if you click on the Merchant tab and you go to Buy slash Sell Cards, every single card in the game is available in the Merchant. So um, that means that as long as you have enough gold, you can buy any card you want. So uh, like right out of the gate, it's not that difficult uh, to assemble a very competitive deck. Like if I just went ahead and I took all the cards I own um, and sold them, then I would be able to get a lot of gold that way. Uh, so I'm just trying to find a card that I own. I don't own a lot of cards at this point in time. But yeah, let's say I want it to sell into the forest because it's banned and I'm probably never going to use it. I can select three and, or however quantity, uh, let's say I want to sell two of them. I can sell them for 50 gold each and there I just made 100 gold. And now I can buy something else that I want. Maybe I want tracking gear, even though it's a bad card, but I'm just going to buy it. There, uh, I just got this card and now I can add it to my deck if I wanted to. Now keep in mind that the selling cost is always half of the buying cost. So you want to be careful when you're selling cards, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't worry too much, especially if you already have four copies of a card. There's no need to have more than four copies of a card ever, so um, I would just sell them. And this might be a little bit controversial, but there's something called foil cards, and they sell for twice as much as a normal card. I don't think I have any foils. Um, yeah, I don't have any foils, but foils sell for twice as much. And if you really want to make money, you can just sell your foils. Um, now, uh, yeah, I mean, some people really like the foils, but personally, I don't really care. And um, all they do is just make your cards a little bit shinier. So now we can go to multiplayer. And this is the best, um, second best way to make money, is going to rated and play, pressing battle. So now I'm in rated, and uh, it might take a, a little bit to get an opponent. Uh, just because you're rated at zero. So we're basically just waiting for someone else with zero um, rating. And once somebody logs in and clicks play, then we'll be matched with them. So uh, the way to make money um, in Shadow Era through battling, uh, in my opinion, I think the easiest way is probably to offer a draw at the start of the game because you still get experience points for it and you get 200 XP for a draw and I believe you get um, something like 25 or 50 gold or something um, and that adds up and you don't even have to like play a game uh, you just have to make sure your opponent accepts your draw uh, and a lot of times they're willing to do it because if you're at zero rating um, it's really gonna drop their rating if they win uh, or sorry if they lose and it's gonna not raise their rating that much if they win so um, by doing that risk reward calculation, a lot of times they'll just accept your draw. But even if they don't accept your draw, uh, if you lose, you still get 50 gold, so um, you can still make money that way. So what you do to offer a draw is you just click on the chat head and you type in offer draw. And that will let them um, accept your draw. And they just accepted my draw. So we just reached level two. We just made 40 gold and got 200 experience points. And yeah, that was really good because we just got, I think, 15 shadow crystals for that. Yeah, now we have 25 shadow crystals. And all we're trying to do is get to 100 shadow crystals. And once we get to 100 shadow crystals, then we can go ahead and buy this pack. So this pack right here is the campaign pack. This is your best value for money. And the reason why is because sometimes you can get a legendary card uh, from this pack and selling it is like I think it's 1600 gold so uh, you get a lot of gold through selling those rare cards and every pack even if you don't get a legendary is about 2000 gold so um, I would keep that ratio in mind about 100 shadow crystals to about 2000 guaranteed gold maybe a little bit more if you pull a good card and um, if you just sell all the cards from this campaign pack then you can get whatever cards you need. Now, this being said, there are other ways to spend your crystals possibly a little bit better. And I'm going to show you that right now. So if you go to this deck selection screen and you click on a deck you want, like Tainted Magic, this is an amazing deck. 
for a beginner, I would recommend every beginner try and buy this deck. It costs 275 crystals, which is a lot of crystals, but it gives you a very competitive deck. You don't even have to do anything, you just have to buy it, and you have a deck that can probably win um, at a pretty high rate on ranked. So if you just buy this deck, you get all those cards, and it's definitely worth it, because buying cards is twice as expensive as selling, um, or yeah, as bu buying the... Yeah, like, if you sold all these cards, you would get half the value of the cards themselves. So, basically, you want to be buying decks rather than buying cards from the pack and then selling them for gold. So, I would buy any of these decks, um, Tainted Magic, Deepwood Trapper, uh, Enduring Devotion a little bit less because this deck has fallen out of the meta. Um, Deadly Dealings is a good one. Uh, Midnight Feast and uh, Exalted Onslaught. All these decks are very, very good and pretty competitive. The other decks are not very competitive, uh, but they can still have some good cards. Like this Blood Fang deck is pretty uh, mediocre, but it comes with a lot of cards. You get like, I think, 50 or 60 cards just from this deck. 60 cards uh, just for uh, 300 Shadow Crystals. So technically it's better value, but these cards are a little bit worse. They don't really work as well together as they do in these premium decks here. So I would definitely go for these decks if you can save up enough Shadow Crystals. And I would go for these booster packs, the campaign booster pack, if you want gold. Now, um, so yeah, you might be thinking, well, wait a second, we only have 25 Shadow Crystals? This is going to take forever to get to 275 Shadow Crystals. Uh, especially as your hero right now, we only have 150 XP and we need 300 XP to level up. So that kind of brings me to the next way to make um, Shadow Crystals. Uh, but first, let's see what we get for our daily reward. Um, so every day you can collect a box. Now, the, you, uh, the way the box appears is if you've already completed one uh, level of a campaign mission. So you need to make sure to do that, and then you can collect the box. Uh, and if you're on mobile, you can also get five shadow crystals every day by watching an ad. Uh, and that's probably the best um, one of the best ways to get shadow crystals. Um, but watching ads is kind of boring, so uh, and you only can do it on mobile. So it's a little bit restrictive. If you're not on mobile, then that's fine. You can still make Shadow Crystals by going to Ranked. Uh, but I'm going to show you one more trick uh, to just build up Shadow Crystals really quickly. So all we're going to do is we're going to go to Buy and Sell Cards. And we're going to go ahead and buy a hero that is also a Hunter hero and a Human. So every card, uh, every hero has a class. So this is Hunter class. And they also have a alignment. This is a Human alignment hero. So it's a human hunter, and our starter hero is Gwen, and Gwen is also a human hunter. So we want to buy that card. Great, we just brought Victor. So now we're going to go back to the deck. And all we're going to do is go to Filter and click Show Unusable. And then we're going to drag Victor over here. And we're just going to click Save. And right there, bam, we have another hero that we can use. So now we've got three heroes. And that was really easy. It just costed 200 gold. And now we've got one more hero to go to ranked. And why is this good? So let's go back to campaign. Now Victor has 0 XP. And we only need 100 XP to level him up. So we could go to multiplayer and find someone who is willing to draw with us. And that would just give us 15 shadow crystals. And like if you go back to the deck screen, there's a ton of heroes. Like this is what? Five times six, so thirty-two heroes. Thirty-two times fifteen shadow crystals um, is going to be like four hundred fifty, uh, more than four hundred shadow uh, crystals. So just by doing this and only leveling up your heroes to level two, you've already got enough shadow crystals to buy the best deck um, or a really good deck from the merchant. Um, and yeah, I mean like. If you want to level up your heroes to level 3, then you get a whole new batch of Shadow Crystals. So yeah, that's a really, really good way to make Shadow Crystals. Now, the best way, in my opinion, the best way to make uh, Shadow Crystals 
is probably by going to Meltdown and clicking this Meltdown button here and playing Meltdown. Now, I'll probably do and cover Meltdown more in depth in another video, but the reason why is because if you're just starting, you're probably going to lose most of your matches in unrated, or sorry, in rated, and that's because everybody else probably has a better deck than you. So, um, yeah, I would recommend if you're starting out, just offer a draw as soon as you open up in a game and just try to get as many draws as possible because that way you can just start building money and a lot of players are going to accept your draw because they don't want to face off against someone who's rated right zero. So um, I would highly recommend just building up your collection that way and leveling up your heroes uh, doing that rather than trying to win with a beginner deck, which is very unlikely. Um, and then next going to Meltdown because in Meltdown it's free and you actually uh, don't have to um, have a good deck in order to win at Meltdown. And the other thing is if you're in the top 25 Meltdown players uh, each week, then you can actually win Shadow Crystals. And I think like the first place person win, wins like 2,000 Shadow Crystals or something. The top five make a ton of Shadow Crystals, I know for sure. Um, but even if you get like 25th place in Meltdown, you can still get like 100 Shadow Crystals. And you just do that every week, and you make a lot of Shadow Crystals, and you level up your heroes really quickly. And you don't need a good deck for that hero. You can have like a really bad deck for that hero and still level up that hero. So that's why it doesn't really matter what these cards are even. Like, this Victor deck is probably terrible, um, but it doesn't even matter because you can still level him up uh, without even ever playing a game with this deck. Then, once you build enough Shadow Crystals to, say, 275, then you can go ahead and buy that deck I showed you in the Merchant. And in that deck, uh, like let's say I would actually probably recommend Tainted Magic because you can just copy paste it to any mage and it will still run very well. So I would buy Tainted Magic and then you can start winning games in Ranked. And once you start winning games in Ranked, you're on your way to becoming um, a, a very good Shadow Era player. So yeah. Hopefully this video kind of helped. It's just a basic introduction, but um, hopefully that helped you a little bit get used to Shadow Era and how to make money and make a deck. Alright, thanks for watching.